Conan. Uh, general arguments about time allocation aside, I, I think with respect to this particular motion, there's an important question. Now, when the, when the Senate reported back with its amendments, that was in June of 2016. That was almost 11 months ago, Madam Speaker. So the government's position was that it, it needed time to analyze those uh, amendments and to come up with an appropriate response. They tabled that response five days ago, Madam Speaker. And so the idea that, you know, they, that they needed time to consider to be able to pronounce on the Senate amendments, then offer amendments of their own that are no less complex than the ones made by the Senate and provide not just opposition parties, although certainly also opposition parties, but stakeholders like the NPF and the MPPAC and the AMPMQ, uh, only five days to consider their response, I think it's just simply not enough. So I wonder why it is that the government thinks it's fine for them to take 11 months to consider those changes and then, uh, you know, and then tell us that we need to hurry this through under time allocation in order to get it done. Why couldn't they have come back to the House sooner with this response? And if it really did take 11 months, and that really was the case, then why won't they give the House a little bit longer to consider the response? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I very much appreciate uh, the question from, from the Honourable Member. Uh, in fact, um, our government's uh, treatment of this legislation and engagement with both the, the House and the other place reflects our respect uh, for Parliament. In fact, we accepted um, proposed uh, amendments from the House to remove some sections pertaining to JICA, the uh, uh, workers' comp provisions, uh, we, and, and we've accepted a number of the provisions uh, from the other place, uh, removing the RCMP-specific restrictions on what may be included in collective bargaining and replacing these restrictions with a management rights clause, uh, removing restrictions, restrictions on the items uh, that are generally not bargained in the federal context, such as pensions or items that would require amending, uh, amendment of legislation. Um, on, and, and, you know, we rejected that amendment because, for instance, on the pension issue, we don't typically include pensions in these collective bargaining areas. The point is we accepted both amendments from the House and the other place uh, as part of this. Uh, we want to get this right. We, we have great respect for the work of the RCMP and we have great respect for the decision of the Supreme Court. This legislation will provide for the first time uh, the RCMP, members of the RCMP, with collective bargaining rights. It reflects the consultations uh, which occurred uh, as the, under the previous government, where the, the RCMP wanted collective bargaining rights, they, they, there was a desire of one national union to represent them, and that that union be focused on representing RCMP members, the right to binding arbitration. This legislation, I think, was strengthened by the engagement of both this House and the Senate, and reflects the wishes broadly of the RCMP and the Supreme Court decision. The commentator, the our member for Elmwood Transcona. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'm wondering, you know, I mean, presumably if you want to get something like this right, you have to do some consultation. My understanding is that none of the prospective bargaining agents were aware of the language of this motion prior to Thursday. I'm wondering if the, if the government can confirm to us that, you know, uh, management at the RCMP didn't have a sneak peek or special input into the composition of this motion as well. The IRL President of the Treasury Board. Madam Speaker, the, the consultations with RCMP members in, um, were broadly participated in by RCMP members across Canada. Uh, that occurred. Uh, that occurred again under the previous government. But it's, it's my understanding that they were extent, extensive uh, consultations. Um, we, which is why um, we we felt we had uh, a, a good understanding of the direction provided by those consultations, which is reflected in this legislation, which does provide, provide collective bargaining rights to the RCMP for the first time ever, uh, and, and uh, the right to collective bargain leading to binding arbitration. Uh, the consultations were quite clear. The RCMP were not looking for the right to strike, but were, were looking for uh, 
uh, bind their, their right to have collective bargaining and ultimately binding arbitration. We think this is a big, significant step forward, which is fair to the RCMP, uh, for whom we have re remarkable respect uh, for their work and important work in protecting our communities. And uh, we're looking forward to moving forward.